to the law. Now, what? How long of a time frame is that? It's 101 years. So for 101 years, people did not have equal access to goods, jobs, services, and money. What happened in the world between 1863 and 1964? What kinds of things happened in the world? So innovation, so cars were created, right? We went from gas-powered lights to electric lights. What else? What happened? What's that? What, two world wars. What else happened? The Industrial Revolution. Yes, sir. Assassinations happened, right? We also added 22 states to the Union in that 101 years. And so what I would offer is that in that 101 years, we, had, we were not an equitable society. So anything that was created in that 101 years, by its definition, by its creation, is a racist institution. And so when you hear people talk about um, institutional racism or, or structural racism, and you go, well, that's a thing of the past. No, it's in the foundation of many of our organizations that we don't even pay attention to, all right? Uh, and then nextly, uh, poverty and inequality. And people love talking about poverty, but they don't like talking about inequality, right? So poverty is something that somebody else is doing. It's your personal choice. You choose to be poor. Had you made better choices, you could have done better things. Well, that's not necessarily true, particularly given this structural racism. I'm not concerned about black people who are behind, who are uh, who might be in poverty or suffering from inequity. I'm not concerned about that because I know that they're 101 years behind everybody else. Which means in 101 years, they would have caught up with everybody else. But what's the problem with that? I don't have 101 years to wait, right? So, so there's that. And then the last uh, obstacle illusion that, it, that, that hurts us is this concept of whiteness. Whiteness is a problem. Whiteness is a problem, right? So, so uh, where is white? Don't say Duluth. <laughs> right? There is no place called white. All of our people came from some place. There's no, thing called, there's no place called black either. And Nigeria does not count. That was another joke. <laughs> okay. um, all those who on HR forums check white, please raise your hand. All right? Where are your people from? Where are your people from? Uh, Ireland. From Ireland, Germany. in Germany. Where are your people from? Ireland, Germany. Oh. <laughs> Ireland, Germany, and Poland. Where are your people from, sir? From Germany. We had a lot of Germans in here today. Where are your people from? Germany. Germany? Luxembourg. Luxembourg. She's like, I got the city. All right. <laughs> got the city. What's my point? Why is why is whiteness problematic? Why is it a, why is it hurtful? All right, so it goes back to the roots of things established before civil rights. Why is it problematic? Yes, ma'am. It, it, it lumps all white people together. Now, here's the trick. What people don't typically realize is that this concept of whiteness. So, I come from a, a faith tradition that believes that the earth was created in six days, whether that's a metaphor or a, an actual, you know, six days is to be debated. Uh, but on the seventh day, there was rest. And so that means that anything created on the eighth day was created by who? Man. By us, right? And so the, this concept of whiteness was created by us. And, 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 and so what whiteness does is it lumps all white people into one category and says that they are all the same. And if you listen to white people talk about other white people, you will know that that is not true. 
Because what do white people call white people who don't measure up to the level of sophistication that most white people think they should? What do they call them? They call them white, white people call them white trash. What else do white people call white people who don't measure up? They call them ignorant. What else do they call them? What's that? She said ghetto, okay. What else? Lazy, prejudice. Red, thank you, I was waiting for it. I was gonna say, who is brave enough to say it, right? They call them redneck, right? The solo cup people, I need a solo cup. Okay. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay. Okay, he's like, no, I don't know. So, so whiteness is problematic. And, and the reason whiteness is problematic is because it takes human beings and turns them into a thing. The same thing happens with black folks. You know, it, it's really tough trying to explain to a child why they are black when they are caramel colored. I'm caramel colored. What do you mean I'm black? Maybe you're black. I'm not black. I'm, I'm, I'm you know. That's a hard thing to have a conversation around, right? And so when we, when we look at these obstacle illusions, these become the barriers that prevent us from living our humanity, from being completely human. So. So when we start talking about this idea of of poverty and, and wealth, we have to understand that context is extremely important. Context is extremely important. So in, um, if I have a farmer who is in um, southern Minnesota, uh, is there a certain kind of intelligence that that farmer needs to be successful? Yes. So what do you need to know to be a farmer to be successful in southern Minnesota? So know something about the lands, something about seeds. What else? Know something about the weather. What else do you need to know? Machinery. Machinery, how to fix machinery, because you're not just pulling that up to Napa Auto Parts, right? What um, grows where? Right? You have to know what? What grows where? What grows where? What else? Soy prices. Soy, so you have to know the marketing, the business aspect, when to sell your products, right? What the soy prices are, what the corn prices are. Um, if you have animals, you have to know some, have some veterinary, uh, veterinary skills, right? Um, um, uh, know a little bit of chemistry, like if you're gonna use fertilizers or whatnot, what, what kind do you use and how do you use them, right? So I would suggest that, that farmers have a great deal of intelligence. But what would happen if a farmer left his farm and went to New York City? What would the New Yorkers say about this farmer? That he was ignorant that he was backwards, that he didn't know much, that he's a hick, right? But what would happen if the, the New Yorker left New York and went to the man's farm? What would the farmer then say about the New Yorker? City He'd call him a city slicker. <laughs> and he might go as far as what my grandfather would say about a dog that doesn't hunt. What do you do with a dog that doesn't hunt? You shoot it. I'm not saying I'm not saying you shoot dogs or animal violence or anything like that. I'm just saying that's what my grandfather would say. I do find it interesting that all of his dogs ran away. But that's a, that's a right? And so context becomes extremely important when we start talking about how people interact with economic systems or, or where they find their values. Understanding the context is extremely important. Can the farmer adapt to New York? Yes, he can. Can the New Yorker adapt to the farm? Yes, he can. What is the distance called between the arrival and the acclimation of that individual? What is that distance called? It starts with T and ends in I'm. It's called time. Very good. Very good. Right? And so all too often what we don't give people is enough time to get acclimated to things. And so we'll, we'll keep going. So we talked a little bit about the hood. Um, when I think about the hood, these are some of the things that, that I typically kind of see, which is that, you know, there's some check cashing places and fast food places and 
and dogs and cars and um, people hanging out, lots of activities, um, drugs and trash and uh, all that kind of stuff. So, so that's typically what, uh, what, what folks see. But I want you to put your, your eyes on as a capitalist. So put your capitalist hat on, open up your capitalist eyes, and when you see all that stuff from a capitalist point of view, what do you see when you look at the hood? You see property. property. What? What's that? Property. Oh, you see profit. In, in what ways? Anyway. Okay. Okay, so I can take the kid, check cash in place and make lots of profit um, and not even be a member of the community, right? What else? What do you see? You see a high density of people, which means if I want to sell cell phones, where do I want to sell them? I set up a little tent, say I give you a free phone, give out free phones, the first month is free, the next month is $99 a minute. <laughs> At 23% interest, right? Uh, what else do you see? You see pollution. Less oversight of all sorts of stuff, right? So trash picked up, clean up, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so when we look at that, that hood, why would someone want to, to live there? When we look at it from a heart standpoint, this is where people grew up. People call this home, right? Um, and, and I will tell you, from a kid who, who grew up on the block, and not quite the hood, but on the block, there's a different, there's different levels. So, so I grew up on, on the block, and I was ever afraid of anything bad happening to me because I understood what the cultural norms were, right? Cultural norm is, you know, you give a, a heads up to anybody that's black, and it's, a, it's, a, it's weird too. It's just American blacks who do that. Because I tried that with a Nigerian dude, and he wasn't going for that. You know, because, you know, it's just a little not, you know. But anyway, so, um, so when you're acclimated to that culture, it doesn't seem so bad or so dangerous or, or, or all of those things. And I will also tell you, check cash in places, we, we like to pick on them, but I think for people who are, are struggling with their finances, it's probably the best thing for them. Because I was with one of these national banks that has three letters, and I, won't, I don't want to embarrass them, but has three letters, and starts like Twin City, you know, but <laughs> three letters. And I bought a, uh, a, a cup of caribou coffee. My account was a little bit short. You know what happened? Bing, 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 bing. All of these overdraft and overfee charges. I ended up spending $350 on a $3 cup of coffee, right? Because I didn't know what all, how all that stuff was going to show up. But you know what? You go to check cash in place. They got all the prices for all the services, no surprises, up on the board. You pay for what you get. And so, um, for some folks, I would say that's a that's a great thing, but the, the difference is you have to understand what you what you're doing, right? So so the hood, the hood, the hood. So AJ came to the rescue by ensuring long-term, low monthly payments. Tom would smoke real estate people because it was substantial community because more people own their own homes. So these next two videos will deal with why the hood exists. Because all too often we try to blame the people who are in there for a situation that they did not create. Remember, the eighth day principle, the things that we created on the eighth day are things that were made by us, which also means that we can recreate them if we want to, right? So here we go. It would racialize housing, wealth, and opportunity for decades in ways few could have imagined. In the 1930s, the federal government created the Federal Housing Administration, whose job it was to uh, provide loans or the backing for loans to average Americans so they could purchase a home. Due to the stimulation of the National Housing Act, 
from every section of the country come reports of vast... In order to purchase a house in America prior to 19...